Good morning, everyone. Right here in Rechav Yenachlaot in Yerushalayim and all around. Thank you, Mordechai and Raya, for hosting this special shir, the second shir on the letter Aleph uh, in Perak chapter Kuf Yud Tet, 119. Yesterday, we learned the first verse, the first pasuk. We learned about the idea of being a tamim, being complete and being sincere. Ha'olchim b'Torah Hashem, which go in the Torah of Hashem. Now let's learn the second and third verses, and then we're going to con- connect them to the first verse. So hopefully you have your Tehillim open, Psalm, Tehillim to chapter 119, Kuf Yutet, to verse 2, Bet. Ashrei notzrei dotav, fortunate are those who keep his testimonies. Here you have the edot. Edot means testimonies. It's one of the ways of referring to Torah and mitzvot and holiness. Bechol leiv yidrushu, who seek him wholeheartedly. It's interesting to note over here. One second, please. I'm just uh, to be a good juggler. Um, there, there's a very interesting interpretation over here. Started at the beginning. We started at the beginning of the second verse. Ashrei notzrei dotav. So a dot are testimonies, and one of the interpretations, one of the beautiful interpretations that I saw in this verse is a testimony are the stories of the Torah. In other words, there are there's an interesting discussion as of if the stories of the Torah are important, or the stories of tzaddikim, how tzaddikim act, are they important, or are they, God forbid, considered bitul Torah, the wasting time instead of us learning Torah? And the answer is that the fact that the Torah itself begins from Bereshit bara lokim et hashemayim et aret, that in the beginning Hashem created the heavens and the earth, all the way till the end of the Chumash, which is this week, Vayechi, when we'll say, Chazak, Chazak, Venit Chazek, continuing to next week, talking about the slave labor of Am Yisrael in Mitzrayim, in Egypt, until the middle of Parashat Bo, all of that is the story, is, is from the, the creation of the world, until the going out of Mitzrayim. The first mitzvah is HaChodesh HaZelachem, of having the Rosh Chodesh, the birth of the new moon. And so why does the Torah not begin from the first mitzvah? Isn't the Torah a book of mitzvot only? And the answer is no, it's not only a book of mitzvot. It's also stories of the Torah. Because as we see over here, praised are those, fortunate are those who guard and tell over the stories of the Torah. Why, why are adult stories? Because they testify Me'idim, they testify that Hashem created the world ex nihilo, and that Hashem gives a good reward to those that observe the mitzvot, and that Hashem punishes those who transgress His words, and that Hashem can change the tava, change the nature. So notzri is someone who, who guards. It's almost like the word matzor, which is like a, a, a siege, a wall that 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 protects around. With their, with their entire heart, they seek to know Hashem. According to the Kabbalah, according to the, to the Masoret, according to that which has been passed down for many generations, when we seek all of these things that have happened throughout our rich history, then we know that we are uh, truly Ne'emanim, um, we are truly trusted to Hashem and His Torah. And Rashi explains, actually, that's in the next verse. So in a moment, we'll 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 get to the Rashi. The next verse states, "Aflo faalu avla," not only by not committing evil, bidrachav halachu, but also by following His ways. So it's not enough not to commit evil. 
it's not enough not to go against Hashem's um, commandments. Rather, bidrach of halachu, it's important to go in Hashem's ways. So first of all, let's connect these two verses, especially number three and number one. We see the idea of going. In the first verse, we see haholchim b'torat Hashem. And then, in the third verse, we talk about bidrachav halachu. The, in, in his ways, they go, quote-unquote. Those that observe Hashem's mitzvahs. So we talk about halachu going. And what the commentaries point out over here is that there are two, two types of going. I alluded to this at the end of yesterday's class, but now hopefully I can elaborate just a drop on this point. The first point of going is you go in the house of Hashem, even in the, in the shul. You go to shul, you go in the shul, you walk around, you, you, you study discuss with your friend, you, you're in a class, you discuss with your rabbi, within the framework of Kedusha, you go. That's called, that's the first type of going. In verse number one, Ha'olchim b'Torah Hashem. You're learning the Torah of Hashem and you're involved, you're going, quote unquote. But then, in the verse number three, when we talk about another type of going, that is another type of going. What does that mean? when we have to go out of the framework of, of Torah and Kedusha, we go, quote-unquote, into the street, and we're seemingly going shopping, or we're going to do a mitzvah, but we're going outside, outside the, 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 the walls of, of the, the yeshiva or the shul or the Chabad center. Then we are told also that we also have to go in Hashem's ways. Even in the going, quote-unquote, even in the travel, even outside the walls of, of uh, the, the framework of, uh, of holiness, we still have to be going in Hashem's ways. And I am reminded of what it says in the Hayom Yom just recently. The Hayom Yom is the first um, uh, booklet that the Rebbe put together. Small paragraphs of inspiration for every single day based on the teaching, teachings of his father-in-law, the previous Rebbe. The Rebbe wrote it in 1943 and 1944. And the Rebbe writes a, a couple of times about the importance of reciting words of Torah even when you're going outside. So when you're walking on the way and you're walking with a spouse or with a child or with a friend, and it's important not to talk about uh, just, just sillinesses, but rather, you can share something that you learned in the Torah class. Or, if you're walking on your own, you can think to yourself words of Torah, or even say to yourself words of Torah. For example, Mishnah, or Tehillim. Tehillim. Usually, we're not allowed to say words of Torah Shebechtav, words of the written Torah by heart. The Talmud tells us, Dvarim Shebechtav, Iya Tarashai Lomran Balpe. Words of... of of, uh, that, that are in the written Torah, we're not allowed to say them by heart. And they say them by opposite. However, something which is Torah Shabbat, which is known to everyone, you are allowed to say by heart. So for example, uh, chapter 20 of the Tehillim, which is a very famous chapter, and many people know it by heart, and we say it for Rafua Shlema or for salvation, for, for any issue. These words, any word of Tehillim, like we said a couple of days ago in the introduction, is holy. But especially chapter 20 and a few other chapters are well known. And you are allowed to say them by heart. Some people can even recite Torah words while you're walking, looking inside the book. Some people makes them dizzy, but other people doesn't make them dizzy. You see people walking in the street reading words of Torah. So first of all, when we recite words of Torah, specifically halachu, going outside, we purify the air. We say words of Torah. Like it says, for example, that if someone says words of Torah, especially in an exotic place, um, especially on a trip or in chutzlaretz, so it says that you never know 
maybe since Hashem created the world 5,781 years ago, no one said words of Torah on this spot. And so that can be a special elevation for that part of the world. That can be a special zechut, a special merit for that piece of ground and that place, that spot, that atmosphere of where you're standing. And so that could be a very special zechut. Maybe if there are children, you can say the 12 passages of Torah that the Rebbe instituted to, for the children to say. That's also a very special thing. I remember when I was in camp as a child, every time, every day, but especially when we went on a trip, we would say together on the bus, and sometimes where we were on the trip, we would say together all the 12 passages. Because it's a great way for a child to say in a short snippet of, of Torah. Not too difficult for a child. And then there's an interesting thing that it says in the Hayom Yom. That when Mashiach comes, there's going to be revelation of godliness wherever we are, wherever we look. It's not only that anyone who sees with eyes, Baruch Hashem, will be able to see godliness. Rather, every single object in the world will be able to see godliness. Excuse me. And so, the ground itself if a person walked on the ground and the person did not say words of Torah, right now the ground cannot, cannot communicate with us. And we think that it's just an inanimate object, so it doesn't know what's happening. But every single thing in the world has, like the Rambam talks about, dot, some kind of knowledge, some kind of understanding. And so right now, it, even the ground that we walk upon does know what's happening. So when Mashiach is going to come, the ground that we walked on, if we said words of Torah or discussed words of Torah or thought in our minds concepts of Torah, then we'll say, I understand why you're walking on me. Because you're saying words of Torah. It's an honor for you to walk on me. Now you're elevating me too. But if a person did not recite words of Torah, halachu, bidrach of halachu, when they're going on the way, like it says in verse number three that we just learned, then the, the ground that we walked upon is going to say to us, bulach, that's in Yiddish, that means golem, um, like a, please help me uh, uh, translate that word, it's basically like, like a, 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 a dumb person, what are you doing walking on me? How are you better than me? I'm an animate object, and I cannot necessarily learn Torah per se. And you are not, walking, are not thinking words of Torah, and you're walking on me. Why are you any better than me? So in summary of this point, it's important to, to learn Torah, to understand the knowledge of Hashem, not only when we are in the framework and the walls, of, of a, a Torah setting, but also, and perhaps more importantly, when we're walking in the street. Because Hashem wants us not only to be in, in the four walls of, of, of the yeshiva and learn Torah, which is an amazing thing. Some people have the zuchot to learn Torah all day in the kolel or in the yeshiva. That's the greatest thing possible. But Hashem also wants us to elevate the world. And when we walk in the street, not only when we're going to do a mitzvah, but the actual walking in the street is a mitzvah. It is holiness. When we think about a class, when we plan a mitzvah to do, all these things are holy. All these things are special. For example, here's another example of planning how it's also part of the mitzvah. Did you know that on Shabbos, we're not allowed to prepare for the weekday? We're not even allowed, not only not allowed to do something with our hands for the weekday, but we're not allowed to even speak words, plan things for the weekday, and any week, weekly matter. So you might be familiar with the concept in Yiddish that we say on Shabbos, Nishtav Shabbos Garet. If someone wants to talk about something, so it's sort of an excuse. I think it's a little bit uh, um, uh, exaggerated, but some people say if they by mistake, say something about the weekday matters, they say, 
Nishtav Shabbos Garet. Really, we should not be talking about these things on Shabbos. So at least he, he's made it clear that, that it's not a Shabbos subject. So the joke goes that the guy comes to Shul, and, uh, and, and uh, after davening, he says to his friend in the morning, he says, uh, he says uh, Nishtav Shabbos Garet, I saw you have a, you're selling a nice car. So the guy answers him, Nishtar Shabbos Garet, it's not really available. So the guy answers him, well, maybe if Nishtar Shabbos Garet, I give you the right price, then Nishtar Shabbos Garet, you'll sell me the car after Shabbos. So he said, uh, Nishtar Shabbos Garet, let me think about it. So he comes back from Mencha, and the first guy says, no, Nishtar Shabbos Garet, did you, uh, is, um, I would like to buy your car. So the guy answers him, Nishtar Shabbos Garet, it's sold already. So, the, um, the, the halacha is, here's, here's the point that I'm trying to bring out. The halacha is that we're not allowed to talk about words, um, subjects of weekday on Shabbos. Did you know the Alter Rebbe says in the Shulchan Aruch that you're allowed to plan to do a mitzvah? Even if you're talking about subjects which ordinarily would not be subjects of holiness, Shabbos-related issues, nevertheless, because you're talking about a mitzvah, you're not only allowed to, to plan a mitzvah, we, ha- we have an obligation on Shabbos to plan mitzvahs. So Baruch Hashem, my occupation is all about Kedusha, it's all about Torah. So I like to plan on Shabbos all kinds of uh, great events for Chabad of Rechavia and also Torah classes, planning, you're allowed to plan on Shabbos anything which is involved with, with Torah and Kedusha. So up until now, we've finished the first three verses. Let's move on. We will, Bezrat Hashem, come back and connect the different verses together. But for now, let's suffice with what we've learned. Num- verse number four, Dalid. Just before we move on to verse number four, I told you that I would tell you the Rashi, what Rashi um, explains on the Tehillim. Uh, we don't have a Rashi for every verse, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's very, very important to be able to share with you what Rashi's interpretation is over here in this, uh, in, in this uh, class. Of course, we'll elaborate also on Chassidut, but it's important to give you the Rashi's, the basics. So he said, Asher, um, af lo fa lu avla. We're going back to number three, that Though they have not done anything wrong, any violation of the mitzvahs, they've gone in Hashem's ways. So Rashi says, even though they have not done anything wrong, the reward is not complete. Unless a person did proactively, did something positive, a fulfillment of a mitzvah. Rashi quotes Tehillim. We're talking about Tehillim over here. Earlier in chapter 34, it says, Sur meira va'asei tov. Go away from doing bad and do good. Both of these are important. We also have in the Torah, we have two types of mitzvot. We have positive mitzvot and we have prohibitive mitzvot. So that's the, the prohibitive mitzvot means staying away from bad. So we have 365 prohibitive mitzvot, and 248 positive mitzvot. Now, while we don't yet have a Beit HaMikdash, then we we're only allowed to, there, it's only possible to observe, I believe it's 83 or 87 mitzvot. There are so many mitzvot that are re- uh, relevant only in the time of the Beit HaMikdash and when Mashiach will come. That's a great reason why we should Ask, the, uh, ask Hashem. Pray to Hashem, the Mashiach should come. But did you know that every moment that we do not violate one of the 365 violations, we're observing a mitzvah. So every moment that we don't steal, we don't kill, and we don't violate any of the other 363 violations in the uh, pro- prohibitive mitzvot, we are observing mitzvahs every moment. That's why it says that even 
even people that, that do sins are filled with mitzvahs like a pomegranate. How are they filled with mitzvahs? Because there are certainly many prohibitive mitzvahs that they're not violating. Just yesterday, I was talking to someone on the phone and they were telling me about a certain family member who has unfortunately gone away from the way of Torah mitzvot. And they made a comment to me. They said, they don't do any mitzvot anymore. I said, I'm sorry, excuse me, please don't say that. You never know how many mitzvot the person is observing. We are never able to, to underestimate what a person does do and what a person does not do. Maybe a person made a decision um, on Shabbos not to do something in their own mind, didn't, tell, didn't share it with anyone. In their own mind, they, they, they made a decision to, to keep even one thing. That's priceless for Hashem. As the Rambam teaches us, that every single detail, every single mitzvah, every single small mitzvah, even, that a person does, can tip the entire scale for the entire world to the good, instead of, God forbid, for the opposite. So we should never underestimate even the smallest thing that someone does. How much more so if we're not violating, if we're not violating so many mitzvot, then for sure we are full of mitzvot. Okay, so that was the Rashi, a beautiful interpretation. Okay. Just one moment. Now let's move on. Let's move on to verse number four. Ata tzivita pikudacha. You have commanded lishmor ma'od. That your precepts be kept diligently. Once again, we have over here the word pikudecha. Pikud is a, is a commandment. And that alludes to the mitzvahs of Hashem. As we mentioned that every single verse has at least one word, which is mitzvah or Torah or pikud or chukecha, any mitzvah which is a, a word which can allude to the idea of, of, of mitzvah. So over here we say as follows. Over here we say, we are telling Hashem, David the Melech says to Hashem, and when we speak words of Tehillim, it's as if David the Melech is speaking through our mouths. The truth is, anytime we say, we, we, we say something in Torah for, in the name of a certain rabbi, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yehuda, or the holy tzaddikim, the prophets, or the Amoras, Abaya, Rava, Rabba, Rabbi Yosef, anytime we say, their words, we, we learn the Mishnah, Talmud, whatever it is, they are saying together with us, that individual rabbi. And that is a special zuchut for their neshama. How much more so when it comes to the holy words of the Tehillim, for sure David the Melech is reciting these words together with us. We actually say that in the paragraph when we finish the entire Tehillim, the special prayer here at Zon, that it should be as if David the Melech is saying these words. Wow. If we had in mind for a Rafua Shalema for someone or for a Yeshua for someone, and David the Melech said these words, wow, how much more so that this is a special schut for that person. So if David the Melech says, he could say it. Atatzivita pikudecha. You have commanded that your pikudim, that your precepts, lishmor mod. They should be kept diligently. So if you, the Almighty God, you, Hashem, you have commanded this to us, then we have to be extra careful. If we're talking about a, a command of a human being, then someone tells you to do something, and it's a good thing, you do it. But if we're talking about Hashem commanding these mitzvot, then that is a, that is a whole other story. The question is asked in Hasidus, how is it possible for us to connect to the infinite? Hashem is infinite and we are finite beings. By definition, it's impossible for a, a finite entity to connect to an infinite entity. So how is that possible? How is it possible for us to connect to Hashem? Every day, every moment we try to connect to Hashem. And the answer is, that's a very good question. If we were the ones initiating the relationship, that would not be possible. But over here we say in the verse, Ata 
tzivita pikudecha. You have commanded your precepts, your commandments. Oh, if you, Hashem, commanded, commanded us, you stretched out your hand, so to speak, and you said, I want this person to do my mitzvah and thereby be connected to me, then the finite can be connected to the infinite. Because it's not the finite in entity which initiated the relationship. It's the infinite which, relate, which initiated the relationship. That's like a king, which is, Hashem is infinitely greater than a regular king. But a king, a real king, like if you ever traveled in, and you saw, in France, and you saw Versailles, or in, in Moscow, you saw the, the huge, or, or in the, the huge palaces that, that the, the kings had, the real kings. To, to ever to to occur to anyone to come anywhere close to the palace, which is is something which no one ever dreamt of. But so to initiate a relationship between the simple man, simple peasant, and the king, that's impossible. But if the king says, even to a simple peasant, I want to embrace you, this Alter Rebbe talks about in the Tanya, and the king says, I want to hug you, I want to embrace you. Can you imagine how? special, how unique the simple peasant will feel. There are no words to, 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 to explain such a, such a relationship. Infinitely more, when the Almighty God, Hashem Himself, chooses to embrace an individual, then the relationship, the, 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 the human being becomes uplifted. Every time we do a mitzvah, Mitzvah doesn't only mean commandment. In Aramaic, mitzvah comes from the word tzavta. Tzadik vav vav taf alef. Tzavta. Tzavta means re, uh, bonding, relationship. When we do a mitzvah, we are bonding with Hashem. And that atat sivita pikudacha, that's what we just learned in verse number four, in Dalit. Atat sivita Hashem, you are, the one, you are the one that commanded us to do the mitzvah. Ah, if Hashem is the one who commanded us, then it's an entirely different situation. Then it's the greatest to be to be connected with you. That's why it says in the Mishnah, schar mitzvah, mitzvah. The reward for one mitzvah is another is, is, is the mitzvah itself. What does that mean? Isn't the reward, it's like saying telling to a child, if you do this, I'm not gonna give you a candy, but what you did itself, that's that's special. The child's gonna look at you, look, it fell off Mars. What do you mean? Where's my candy? Where's my chocolate? But if we realize what a mitzvah is, that when we do the mitzvah, we are connecting to the infinite, we're connecting to, to Hashem, Ribbono Olam, the master of the universe, then that is the greatest reward. What are you going to give us? You're going to give us Olam Abba? You're going to give us some, some uh, material, m materialistic reward? That's good. Hashem does it anyways. Hashem, Hashem gives it to us, and Hashem should give more and more. But what's the best, what's the, what's the greatest reward? The greatest reward is the mitzvah itself. The fact that we can connect to Hashem. And that's why the Alter Rebbe, when he, when he used to go into a, a, uh, a deep, a deep um, I'm not sure what it's called in English, but it's, it's a, um, a really deep uh, contemplating into Hashem. He used to, he used to be, feel as if he was in another world. Sometimes he would even roll on the floor when he was middle of davening out of such dveikut, out of such cleaving to Hashem. And he would say to Hashem, I don't want your olam azeh. I don't want this world. I don't want your olam abba. I want just you yourself. In Yiddish it sounds the best. He used to say it in Yiddish. Ich will nit dein olam hazen. Ich will nit dein olam haba. Ich will nor dich alein. I only want you. And when we do a mitzvah, a tzaddik is able to see that when we do a mitzvah, we connect to Hashem more. We don't recognize it now. Sometimes we, we may feel it. But when Mashiach comes, we are going to recognize the great bond and relationship that we have formed through the fact that Hashem told us to do the mitzvah and we fulfilled all the mitzvot. Thank you so much for joining us. Bezrat Hashem tomorrow morning right here, Kabbalah Cafe, 9.30 Jerusalem time. We look forward to seeing all of you here. And the Sunday morning, Rabbi Diamond will be teaching. And Monday morning, we have a great class prepared for you.
with verses number five and six. Bezrat Hashem, I'm looking very forward. All the best. Shalom, shalom.